Hi, welcome to the May 25th, 2023 Inspiring Author Conversations. I'm Kathy Davis with Davis Creative Publishing, and today we'll be speaking with Christopher McClellan. We'll be talking about the author spotlight on podcasting. Before we welcome Chris, I want to remind everybody of a few logistics. The call is being recorded, and you'll receive a link to the YouTube video within about 48 hours after the call. Your attendance at these meetings does serve as your permission to be seen in the recordings. Please mute yourself. We've done that. Please find your chat button down at the bottom of your screen and type all of your questions into that chat. I'll make sure I'm I'm watching that and make sure we get all your questions answered with a smaller group like we have so far today. Um, I may just have you unmute and be able to ask Steve your questions directly. We promise to end the call around noon or shortly thereafter. Typically, we've been ending around 1215-ish, depending on the number of questions that we've got. So help me welcome Chris. He's the author of What's the Deal with Caregiving? He is the founder of the Whole Care Network. Chris and his now deceased partner were featured in a 2015 Pulitzer Prize nominated story entitled In Sickness and in Health, A Couple's Final Journey, which propelled him to write his book and start the Whole Care Network. The motto at Whole Care Network is helping you to tell your story one podcast at a time because it is through story sharing where diversity meets the road to collaborate on a common cause. Welcome, Chris. I'm trying well, to- Well, greetings, and Kathy. I, You yeah. and I were introduced by mutual friends here in St. St. Louis, St. Charles area. Sure, yeah. And several years ago. So we've just kind of kept in contact and we have similar audiences. And I, I thought this would be a great moment to learn more about what you're doing with the Whole Care Network. So one of my first questions is, what is the Whole Care Network? Let's start there. <laughs> well, the Whole Care Network is really a, uh, it, it's, it's a podcasting network per se. It's where people come to tell their stories and uh, share resources. I learned through uh, my caregiving experience that uh, the best information and referral usually came from one caregiver to another. And with my background in social work as a director of a information and referral service for Catholic Charities in St. Louis a number of years ago, it just seemed to be a natural fit to, as I moved on and being a, what I call now a caregiver advocate. And podcasting just seemed to be the natural fit uh, for me and, and for people who were wanting to tell their stories. Uh, a number of our podcasters do have uh, books. And a number of our newer podcasters are looking to write a book, but uh, I, I think what podcasting does, it helps comp, it, it, you know, it helps complement an individual's brand and where they're where they're going with either their book or their blog or any type of written material because you get to put that voice, get that get to put the voice to the material. Do you ever? I, I've had authors ask me if I thought that the podcasting world was so flooded right now mm -hmm. that should they really take the time to go ahead and create a podcast? And your answer would be? My answer would be most definitely because that content is forever, as long as you don't hit the delete button. And and here's kind of an example. I I started podcasting in 2013. I think I have about three to 400 episodes of my Healing Ties podcast. And I still get comments from podcasts that were created in 2013, 2014, because it's evergreen and it can, it, it lives on in the internet and it's, uh, and you can take that content and you can update it, you can redistribute it, you could repurpose it. Uh, and it's, it's always available as a part of the, uh, the marketing ploy uh, that people are trying to use to get their get their brand noticed. That, but I always like to caution people when folks come to us and say, well, I, I, I want to get those Joe Rogan numbers. I want those million downloads. Well, I, I would, <laughs> I wish people luck when they're able to do that because it's not easy. But when you're a solo entrepreneur, uh, an author, uh, a blogger, podcasting, I think is one of the perfect ways to help uh, in your marketing material because it's it's from your voice. And I don't, you know, while we do have folks that 
have sponsors for their podcast. Uh, you know, we're kind of set up more as a, a complementary to somebody's already marketing scheme that um, that they're involved in. And it sounds like from a marketing standpoint, because you mentioned evergreen and that you can reuse the content yes. elsewhere. How have you seen some of the podcasters do that? Where do they use it? Ooh, they use it on a variety of spaces. Uh, they will take either 30, 60, or 90 second snippets uh, from a clip, audio clip, and turn it into an audiogram. Uh, it's very popular with uh, the reels that are available now on Instagram and Facebook and the social media. The other component that I find is very successful is when you can attach the audio file or embed the audio file into a blog post. Uh, you're referencing something in a blog post that you've already previously talked about, and that voice is automatically there for that uh, for that reader to hear it in their own words. And then you, with the with the <laughs> with the where AI is going these days, you can you can take some of these written words and and uh, turn it into a full full video podcast as well if that's uh if that's something that you're interested in there's just you know there, there's so much content that can be repurposed and reused to help uh highlight what you're currently doing so one of the questions we have from richard podcasting as a host is time consuming and one gets the same benefit from being a guest on various podcasts so that's a question. Yeah. Right. So do sometimes people start out as the guest and then they kind of get the bug and decide to do their own? Uh, uh, the that, that is a good question, but most people start out as a guest and they do get the bug uh, because they want to have their own channel. They want to have their own content available on, the, on all the different podcast platforms. And then they have the ability to return the favor and invite that that host to a to their own podcast mm -hmm. so it, you know it, it it's six one ways half a dozen the other but um the, I, I think having the ability to have your own channel on all the different popular podcast platforms is uh is a little bit more advantageous than continuing to be on guests on other people's podcasts so would i if I have the assumption that having a podcast is one way, especially if I'm a speaker, if I have a personal brand, if I'm an author, a one way to help increase that following of people exactly. that mm -hmm. just want another piece of your voice, whether it's in writing or audio. Right. It's another, it's another piece to the marketing puzzle that, uh, uh, that again, puts it into your own words. You know, it's one thing to, to read something about somebody. Uh, but then it's another thing to hear it right from their voice because you hear the, you hear their passion, you're, you, you, you know, their why, mm -hmm. and you can be in touch with that person. And, and the other thing that's, I think that's really advantageous about the podcasting is it's always on demand. So you can listen, at, listen to them at a time that it's convenient for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, you know, whether it's 15 minutes or 20 minutes or however, However long an episode is, I suggest no more than thirty minutes. But That's my next question. Okay. <laughs> but uh, but you know, listeners can uh, can take that podcast and listen to it whenever it's convenient for them. It's always readily available. Well, and and even with books, there's a a recent statistic that came out where people are are letting go of the eBooks and moving more. So I think eBook sales dropped 13% and audio increased 13%. So you can kind of see where they're, where they're going at that point. And we're all multitaskers. And, we're all multitaskers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and audio allows us to do many things at the same time. So if I decide I want to have a podcast, where do I start? Do I need a studio? Can I do it at home? How does that work? You can you can do it. I, I'm doing it right here in my uh, in my home office. Uh, there's a number there's a number of different virtual studios. You know, we're we're on Zoom today, which is uh, okay for podcasting. But there's some other programs out there we use at the Hooker Network. We use Riverside FM. Uh, there's also uh, Streamyard. Those are the two probably the two more popular. 
podcast, virtual podcast platforms. I personally recommend Riverside because of all the features that are available, and especially on the audio side, where you have the ability to uh, download the files locally and also in the cloud. And why is that important? Well, I'm looking out my window here in Florida and waiting for the next storm to, ar to arise. So if the if the power was to go off, Riverside still has that um, the that file, that audio file in their cloud, and and the user, you know, I'd I'd still be able to download whatever was <laughs> whatever was available from from when the power outage. But you you've always got a couple of backups, uh, and and for me. Riverside's just a little bit more user friendly than uh, than Zoom is for 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 podcasting. But to each, you know, you got to you have to use the equipment that you feel most comfortable with. I know I had a, a former TV personality here in St. Louis that told me she does her podcast in her coat closet. Right. And, you know, pulls up a TV tray and you know her computer and because of the extra, she has a huge walk-in coat closet, but. It allows her to sit in there and and it, the coats buffer the echo. The coat, yeah. coats buffer the echo. I, I've heard, you know, I've got a couple of our podcasters that do that too. They, uh, but I, <laughs> I came out of the closet a long time ago, so I'm not going back in it. <laughs> it's too hot in, in Florida for. It's coats. too hot in Florida because so. <laughs> so so I was interviewed on someone's podcast last week, mm -hmm. and she said, "Oh, by the way, we also post the video." So. How does that work? Does everyone always post a video of their podcast or is some of it just strictly audio? Well, I, I kind of leave that up to the guest if they'd like, uh, if they'd like the video portion as well. Uh, you know, video is a, a certainly a hot topic these days. And with YouTube venturing into um, uh, uh, the podcasting world as well, uh, I, you know, it's something, again, it's what are you comfortable with? Are you comfortable having having your your mug on a on a screen that's going to be there forever? Um, I, I don't know. It's six one way, half a dozen the other. I, you know, video is important, uh, and you can take those snippets out of the video as well. I, I think it's kind of the best of both worlds. But again, it's what it you know what are you what are you trying to accomplish with your podcast? Is it is it a short six episode series where you're you're really knocking out all the the, the important points that you want to make about your brand or do you are you do you envision this going into you know three or four or five different seasons where you've got different topics that you're going to be covering in and around your particular brand it's i i think it's just a it's just a matter of what you're comfortable with so is are there um, expectations of how often, you know, what is the, what does the audience expect? Do they want to hear from you weekly or monthly, or is that part of just do what feels right to you? Well, I, it's two things. I think you, when you're starting out a podcast, you, what we do is we would create, and most, I think most people do this, a, a teaser episode where, where we introduce the podcast, we introduce the brand, we introduce the host and it's through that discovery that you know the host knows what you know, is this going to be a six episode series or are we going to are we going to publish once a week every other week you know what let your listeners know what to expect is the key and be consistent with it there are there are some folks that you know they podcast all year but they take a month off every quarter they 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 mm -hmm. they do a, a new episode every week, but they take a month off every quarter. That that's fine. The, the important thing is to let your listeners know when they can expect uh, their next episode. And then, how do you typically let those listeners know? Is that social media? A variety of ways. Social media is one. Whatever your email list might be, mm -hmm. uh, and on the bio of your. Uh, of your podcast uh, you you let people see you know people you let people know well you know we 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 post every tuesday at at one o'clock or we post every other tuesday at one o'clock 
is just kind of give people a heads up what to expect because most people are going to, you know, you're going to want people to subscribe to your podcast and the subscriptions usually come through the variety of different podcast platforms, uh, whether it's Spotify, Google, Stitcher, I mean, iHeart, there's, there's tons and tons of different podcast platforms where people get their podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, what we try to do at the Whole Care Network is a, is a little bit different is we're trying to draw people, draw listeners to the landing page of all of our show hosts, because most of our show hosts, well, not most of all of them, they all have something that they're doing with their brand. And there's limited amount of information you can get on a, a podcasting platform about the host. And, and trying to come back, trying to get people to come to the landing page where they can see all the all the different works of the show host. It's it's kind of a challenge, but uh, for a small network like uh, like ours, um, uh, I you know we're trying to drive the traffic back to the website instead of, instead of somebody else's. So right, and then so once they go to that page, and if if you want after this call, you can send us a link to that page so we can sure. share that mm -hmm. with everybody. Um, then they would just click on the host that they want to hear. They'd click on the host they want to hear and they'd see not only the um, uh, the podcast player, but they'd see all the other content uh, that, uh, that that host uh, brings. And they'd also see what that, what that host does as it relates to their particular brand, whether they have speaking events, whether they, uh, they have a book, um, you know, we, we link out to uh, wherever they're selling their book. So um, uh, it, it it's a little bit more than what you're going to get on a podcasting platform. And, and I have my fingers crossed because we were supposed to debut our own, our own uh, podcast player app uh, later on the summer, which um, looks like it's going to be in, in July, which again, will allow listeners of our podcast to 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 kind of stay in house which is i think uh, is is very important for brand awareness is there a way to know like how many people how many hits a podcast gets or is there a way to measure that to know if you're actually getting any listeners there are, there are, there are a, a number of different ways uh, to measure uh, you can also you, you get the number of downloads and there's usually uh, uh, there's two ways of looking at it whether it's a unique download uh, that is, it's been downloaded one time by one uh, IP address, and then uh, there the what's <laughs> unique, and I forget now. I'm forgetting the other tabulation, but that sometimes people from the same IP address download a podcast multiple times. Mm -hmm. So th those two those two items are separated, and I know the the terminology for that second one's going to come to me, <laughs> but uh, no, but does. then. It always does, but also you got you have the opportunity. You can see the geolocation where where wow. are the podcasts being downloaded? Is it being downloaded in the United States? Is it being downloaded in in a in a foreign country? You can also determine on what device a person is listening. So is it you are your most of your listens on Apple or is it on Spotify or you know so. We, all those are all those are kind of broken down mm -hmm. uh, and how long people are listening to a podcast you know those the you know the statistics are there to uh, to help support what you're what you're trying to do what the statistics don't do is when you take those you know those snippets those 30 60 90 second uh, promotional items out of the uh, out of the podcast and use that in your social media. You kind of have to measure that a little bit differently uh, as um, uh, as you met, as you would measure your own personal social media uh, platforms to see how those those numbers are tracking. But we can give people precise numbers about how many downloads and where they're downloaded from and where people are listening. So I had a thought if. So like on the podcast that I was on last week, do I own my content, the words that I said? So like, can I reuse that? Well, as it relates to the whole care network, uh, 
everybody owns their own content. Okay. Yeah, and that's pretty much uh, pretty much true across the board. It, it, you own your own content as long as you're hosting it. It's very critical to to make sure that no matter where you sign up, that that's um, that, that that that's prevalent. You don't want somebody else owning your content. So the and host it, owns the content, and what about the guest? Uh, the guest, you know, the the host owns the content. The guest. And we okay. use this in one of our disclaimers for our, our guest disclaimers is that the guest is understands that they're freely giving their content, freely giving their expertise. And and in most cases, unless there's a paid agreement between the host and the, and the guest, it, it's usually, um, you know, there's, there's no fee involved. Uh, but that that's, again, set up between the. Uh, the host and the guest uh, for the whole care network, we really ask just three things. We ask that um, that if you're borrowing, I use that word kindly, if you're borrowing anybody else's content, that you disclaim it, that you make it, uh, you you make your listeners aware of that. And if there is a a copyright infringement from any other brand, that copyright infringement is between the podcast host and that brand. the The whole care network is not, you know, is not involved in any type of uh, uh, copyright uh, infringements because we're we don't own that content. The the hosts are just freely sharing that content with uh, with the network. So at its core, the whole care network is a resource to help the podcast podcasters right. get their message out to more people. Right. Okay. That's that uh, that is exact that, that, it's like that, you've created a community. We've created a community and all our while you know our one of our main focuses on the whole care network is caregiving and senior care but you know really we're all of our content is based around our four pillars of care which is our physical health, our spiritual health, and when I say spiritual, I want to say that's <laughs> it's not religious based. It's more about story sharing. Mm -hmm. uh, your your physical, spiritual, mental, and uh, financial health. All the all the podcasts touch one of those areas, and everybody usually has a story on why that's important to them. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that parallel because we're with what we do in that you know we're always trying to help people find their voice and share their stories. And create that positive ripple. Create that positive, and I could, and that you know, it kind of proves to be true. It's you know, it gets through story sharing where diversity meets the road to collaborate on a common cause. Mm -hmm. You know, when our caregiving story was published in goodness, it's now two thousand and that was two thousand and fourteen. You know, one of the reasons it was so successful and nominated for a Pulitzer Prize was because it talked about you know, common themes that everybody understands: love, care, and commitment. It just, the story just happened to be about two men yeah. in, in the in the long term of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of what we've tried, the atmosphere we've tried to develop at the Whole Care Network is, you know, it's through those stories that we get to know each other a little bit better and take that time to, you know, to listen and uh, share and work collaboratively. And I think that's, you know, that's, one of the unique features that we have on the network is a variety of people from different walks of life, different ages that all have a story to share. Mm -hmm. As so if I were to decide I want to do this, what's the first thing that I, how would I start a part podcast? What equipment do I need? What kind of closet do I need? What kind of closet? Et cetera. <laughs> and what's my first step? What do the, I do? Well, you know, the first step uh, would be, you know, think about what your message is. What would you, what would you want to say on your podcast? And then, uh, I I'm happy to have a a, a visit with uh, with anybody about podcasting. What's in what's entailed? Your equipment. Uh, you can have the you can have the Pinto or you can have the Cadillac. It's what you're comfortable with, so that you can sound. Excellent, because there's one thing that's going to turn off the listener is poor audio quality. 
So we have a variety of, uh, of uh, suggestions for show host on the different types of microphones. I, I kind of went overboard on mine, but uh, uh, but there there are there are good quality microphones out there for a hundred bucks. Or if you wanted to go to the Cadillac, you could do the two and three thousand microphones. I don't think podcasters need to go in that direction, mm -hmm. but uh, you know we've got uh, we've got the resources to be able to help you make a decision on what's best for you. And through our podcast host, uh, podcast podcast.co, there's a variety of, of self-help courses that, that are available at no charge. Uh, and I'm always available to kind of help uh, walk somebody through the, the process and get them going on their, especially a, up to their teaser episode, which is so important to get the, to establish the podcast. Richard, you bring up a really good point. Um, Richard's had the honor of being a guest on several podcasts. The recent discussion today has me wondering about the issue of copyright related to my content being shared. Um, mm -hmm. Anything, Richard, do you want to jump in on unmute yourself? And it's a. Well, I'm just, it just made me start to think. I mean, I, I have been on, you know, I, as I said, I've had the honor of being on many and they've given me permission, obviously, to, they sent me the link that I could promote it through my network, which is wonderful. But when I start talking real specific about my men's work and men mentoring men network and my philosophy and my work, there's, you know, let's be candid. There's a lot of people out there and selfishly, I, I'm, I'm glad to promote it, but I also don't want it out there where someone can gather my material and just duplicate it. Uh, so it just made me think about it because no podcaster has ever said to me who owns it because I'm in this other thing now where you could podcasters are looking for guests and you fill out this form, but it doesn't say anything about confidentiality and uh, use of copyright. That's not in the agreements. So it just has me pondering now, particularly about this one area that I'm sure voting, you know, so and launching. So I'm a little concerned there. Yeah. And pardon me. And, and you know, rightly so. But I, I think um, when you go on as a guest to somebody's podcast, yeah. Uh, from my perspective and experience, you're going on to, you know, to promote something that you're doing uh, and uh, are to share a message or to share a story. And, you know, what, what is your end purpose for being a guest on that podcast? Uh, uh, how that content is used afterwards is definitely a discussion you want to have with the host. You know, what, what are they going to do with the content? Um, are they making money off that content? You know, I, I don't know. That's uh, well, that's a good know. point, Christopher. I mean, Chris, because one of the things is, you know, Kathy knows this. I don't know any of you others, but I'm also a professional speaker and I do keynotes and I do a lot of speaking. And mm -hmm. I, as we're talking, I'm thinking there's no difference if Chris, you were in the audience now speaking about my work with men at a conference. How is that any different? Because you're going to walk away. And right. you duplicate what I just told. I mean, so I, it just makes me think. That's all, yeah. I'm just right. I mean, well, yeah. think how in depth I want to get into as a yeah. guest, as well, a and, on it. Yeah, you know, it may work very similar similarly as our anthologies, our collections. And what the attorneys have told me is that whoever is the sponsor of that anthology, they own the rights to the title and the collection, even though you can't copyright the or trademark the title you can trademark it other ways and mm -hmm. each individual author or each individual perhaps podcast guest they still retain ownership of their intellectual property right and you more than likely will <clears throat> have used it elsewhere where you may have a copyright or a trademark sign yeah. and mm -hmm. i would think that would be your protection right uh, your I words are your targets. words yeah yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, I think the problem would arise if, you know, if, if you were on a podcast and somebody, re, you know, they, they just took the audio file and they took your words verbatim and used them in print and didn't 
provide you with the, uh, you know, the credit for that. I mean, that I, I'm. Yeah, you can't. I mean, it's not happened to yeah. anybody yeah. on our on our network, but I'm sure it's happened somewhere down the road because yeah. there's some, you know, some unscrupulous people out there that uh, that like to borrow. And I always use the word they like to borrow. <laughs> <laughs> they like to borrow content, and then oh, I forgot to attribute that to. Us. Yeah, let me take care of that. So <laughs> that's why I always uh, you, you try to get a disclaimer signed up front, uh, so you, everybody knows where this is going because. And, and I, this is something I've had happen where, you know, I'm friends with this guest now, but two or three years down the road, we've had a falling out. And then that falling out leads to, they see that, oh, goodness, well, you're, you're making a profit off of uh, some of the content that I've provided you. Well, now I want some of that. Well, you have that disclaimer uh, signed up front. You're, you're all covered. So. Thank you. Yeah. So what originally attracted you, Chris, to podcasting yourself? Well, it just seemed like it was a natural fit from after 500 blog posts mm -hmm. uh, about uh, esophageal cancer and caregiving that when I looked to do something different after Richard died, and again, I like kind of Richard just said, uh, um, I'd been on some I'd been on some radio shows. I'd been guests before, and I thought, you know, I really like this, and it just seemed to fit uh, fit where I wanted to go next, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and I just kind of stuck with it now, and you know, developed this little network to give people the opportunity to share their story, like I did, and as the media has just continued to to grow. Uh, and the technology has gotten so better. I go back and listen to some of those podcasts in 2013 and 2004. And I think, Why would anybody listen to anything like that? Because the tech, the the microphones were bad. The technology was new. Now it, it's almost, it's almost like you can have your own radio st studio and station right in your own office because yeah. the technology has gotten so much better. Pretty amazing. Yeah. So I I understand that you do have a gift for our, our guests today. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, uh, <laughs> I have a link here anyway. <laughs> you have a link? Yeah. The wholecarenetwork.com WCN authors. Oh. I know it's been a while since you filled out my form. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 well the be a surprise uh, let's go see what it is yeah. we'll look at... <laughs> well well actually the 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 surprise would be uh for all your listeners today and people a part of the uh uh of the pardon me people a part of the webinar there's 20 percent off for anybody that wanted to do a uh a, a six episode podcast series for any of our three plans so that would be 20% off for, for everybody that's involved today or who is watching it uh, uh, on demand. Terrific. And are there any parting words of wisdom that you'd like to share with us today? Say now we're all excited and we're ready to go. And your words of wisdom would be? If you can dream it, you can do it. Get your voice out there. I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you, Christopher. I have loved having you here today. Oh, Kathy, it's good to be connected and I'm so glad we had a chance to do this. We'll make sure that everybody gets your contact information. And I want to thank the live audience guests for being here also today. Be watching for the follow-up email with Chris's contact info. We'll see you also Thursday, June 8th, same time. Uh, we'll be talking with Cheryl Bonini ellis on maximizing your leadership skills with the, her six pillars for high performance. That's a mouthful. <laughs> I, have time, I have time to practice on that one. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah. I want to thank everybody for being here today and we'll hopefully see you next month. See you soon. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks thank guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.